Here's a new Honda Civic Sport. Guy had kind of a rip-off deal at the dealer I'll talk about, and we'll talk about the whole car, what you get, and what he likes and what he doesn't like. Right off the bat, the dealer added five grand, and their excuse was, well, we have it here, so we're adding five grand to the price of the car. But to add insult to injury, he ended up paying about 34700 Considering that the sticker price said 24 grand, it's kind of a ripoff. Of course, it is Connecticut now, the East Coast, where people love ripping people off. It seems to be a thing they do all the time. It's a good car. There's no arguing that. But he had to overpay for it. Now, it is a Civic Sport. I kind of like the gray color. And it's a four-door, so it's got room in the back, too. It's got a nice little hatch trunk. It's a nice looking car and it's a Honda Civic. Honda probably makes the best engines in the world. They make more engines than anybody. This particular one is a two liter four cylinder engine. It's not one of these tiny little 1.5 ones. It's a decent size. It's not turbocharged but it's also a standard transmission, a manual transmission, right? It's got plenty of get up and go, yet at the same time, when you drove it here from Connecticut, you got about 40 miles a gallon on a highway. You can't argue the speed versus the gas mileage versus the fact it's a two liter Honda engine. Honda S 2000s. Those things were screaming cars. It's a very similar engine that's in them. They're fun to drive. They last to get great gas mileage. I, mean, I like it because it's not cluttered. Look, there's a lot of room. Now, the funny thing is, there's a lot of working room. But let's face it, it's a Honda. They don't break down very often. So you really don't have to get under there all that much. But if you do, you can. And if you're the type of person who wants to modify it, and you can put a turbocharger, a supercharger, whatever you want. In this case, it's the man's daughter's car. She just likes driving around. She's not going to soup it up or anything. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Now, what the father doesn't like, and I agree, is... It's got these low profile tires. He doesn't like the relatively rough ride, but he's a smart man. He did pay $8 a month on the payment for the rims and the tires. <laughs> because those low profile tires, you hit chunks in the road. Well, I gotta say at least, he lives in Connecticut and the roads in Connecticut are quite a bit better than the ones at least in Rhode Island. Rhode Island's always voted the worst roads in the nation. So <laughs> it's still, it's the East Coast and you're gonna hit stuff and you're gonna eat up rims and tires. If you're gonna have these, really, pay the $8 a month, it's worth it. They can't argue it's an insurance policy that says if they're broken, they're broken. They can't say, well, you ran into something, that's what the insurance is for. Get inside, look, it greeted us when we sat down inside, right? He doesn't like the electric parking brake, it confuses him, because he's old school like me. You get on a hill, it'll kinda of put itself on so you don't roll backwards. You're driving a standard train, you're usually compensating for a little roll. You don't have to do that. And he still says, I don't like the electric parking brake. I'm not used to the thing. When he brought it here and put it on, it started rolling back, and I had to quit coming in and pull it on. I don't like that electric stuff, but heck, they're all going that way, so there's not much you can do. You know, it's a Civic. It's a relatively economy car. You can set things up to get a little bit better gas mileage. Got monster-sized cup holders. Pretty ergonomic design. Now, I'm not a fan of sit up screen to me it kind of looks like you just stuck an ipad on the dash but a lot of the japanese companies they, they kind of do it as a second thought you can see it's really not integrated with the style of the dash i'd rather have one built in I'll start her up and those hoods open because we have the hood open and it's got a nice setup you got your tachometer speedometer and then you have the digital readout there. It's got a decent stereo system. You heard the guy's voice starting up, but I can't play other people's things or they'll infringe on their rights. So I don't play them in the videos, but it does have a nice sound system. It's missing a sunroof and I say, who cares? I find sunroofs to be annoying. It's either too hot outside or too cold outside or it's raining or then when it does rain, they eventually drip into the car. They roll the windows down. I find sunroofs to be kind of a ridiculous thing. A lot of people, oh, we've got a sunroof. And I go, what do you really need it for? All it does when you open it up and it's hot outside, the sun gets in and it makes it even hotter. I like the old school pedals, chrome and black. I love the louvers. We'll turn the fan on. You can move them all over the place. You're gonna blow all kinds of places. I like the design and I like the little throttle inside that you can really move it anywhere you want. No more trying to get it just in the right place. You can here because it swivels all around. Interesting design. And it's got a relatively basic screen. I do have to say that the $150 
pumpkin android I put in my wife's matrix does a heck of a lot more than this thing does. And that's ages ago, years ago, I put it in. So, you know, they could have added a little bit more on that if you ask me. But as you can see, the smooth running Honda engine and realize this. People made a big to do a few years back about Honda engines and oil dilution problems. Well, this engine doesn't have any of those problems. It doesn't have all that extra pressure blowing everything through. And even the new Hondas, they don't have a problem with it because the new GF6 oil takes care of it. And even in one of these, I'd run the GF6 oil because it's a great oil, makes things last longer. Engines cost a lot of money. Oil is relatively cheap. Just change your oil, use that say every 5,000 miles. Because unlike a lot of engines out today, you see the GMs, the Chryslers, they're burning oil when they get just 20, 30,000 miles. And they say, well, that's normal, right? That's not normal for Hondas. You take care of one of these engines. I got people bringing me these two liter engines, 160,000 miles. They don't burn a drop of oil because they change the oil every 5,000 miles. You take care of one of these Hondas, they can last you an awful long time. Now the father's personally a little bit kind of off with all the crazy electronics, electric braking, the keyless ignition. So he paid about a thousand bucks extra for a hundred thousand mile warranty on all the electronics. It's got the headlights that are high beam. They automatically turn themselves down. I mean, there's all kinds of computer stuff on these. Realize that. This is not a car you want to drive through deep water, to say the least. If it's raining, drive it to the top of a parking lot and go have a drink or something. Don't try to make it through deep water. You'll destroy the car. It's low to the ground. It's got all kinds of electronics on it. And if you're worried like him, Hey, and you live on the coast next to the ocean? Maybe it's not a bad idea to pay a thousand bucks for the whole hundred thousand mile warranty on all the electronics because it's chock full of electronics like any modern car. Take it for a spin. Now it does have this crazy electric parking brake stuff, so turn that off. And it is a six speed transmission. Now, it's got a relatively good backup camera, I gotta say. I just don't like the idea that this thing is sticking up. To me, it just looks out of place. I wish they would have made a dash where it was integrated. I like the integrated dashes better. It doesn't seem extremely low to the ground. It's low, but not extremely low. And they are fun handling. Now, he doesn't like the highway set up for these electronic power steering. And I, I'm not a big fan of them either. I like the old systems, but eh, they're all going to electronics. So there's much you can do about that. Well, the owner just informed me that even though they charge them five grand extra and then 1500 for this waxy deal, they did throw in four free oil changes. And here we go. got a nice response to it. It's a fun little car to drive. Now it's not like a Civic Type R that's an absolute screaming monster, but it gets you where you're going and you get 40 miles a gallon on the highway. You really can't argue against that. He's got a plumbing business, but he doesn't travel far, maybe a hundred miles in a day. So he wanted to get one of these Ford electric transit vans that they're going to be working. He put down a thousand bucks and they said it's going to be $53,000 when we build them, might be a year or two. So he put his deposit down, right? Well, he just got a letter the other day and they informed them that, well, if you still want to get it, it's now $88,000. I mean, it amazes me, the greed of these companies, almost 10,000 over sticker for the Civic. These guys are just gouging everybody. Listen to Scotty, wait if you can. Now, he couldn't wait for this because somebody stole his daughter's other car. All the airbags deployed and they totaled it. So they had to get a car. So they didn't have too much choice here. And they did look at used cars, but they were so ridiculous. They found a Civic, had 90,000 miles, and they wanted 24 grand for them, which is the list price of the new one. So they just bought a new one instead. Remember my advice, at least for now, well, I don't know, you may be watching this in the future and it all change, but don't buy a car right now if you don't have to. The recession's gonna come, prices are gonna start tumbling down, everything's gonna start tumbling down. And then all these people that think, well, we're gonna make these 53 grand like the Ford and then send you a letter. No, it's gonna be 88,000 now. I mean, see how it all pans out when the literal crap hits the fan, giving in the cars that they can't afford anymore and the market is glutted with people trying to sell houses and cars. Believe me, the prices will come down then. But as it stands for the car itself, it's an excellent example of Honda engineering. Fun to drive, zippy, gets 40 miles a gallon on a highway. I'm not a fan of the low profile tires, but a lot of people are going for that. They do handle better. Now they ride a little bit rougher. It is a sport though, think about it. Like Toyota, 
Okay, they got the Toyota Camry, then they got the Toyota Camry TRD. My wife loves the new Camrys. She went in the TRD and she hated it because it had a rougher ride. I like it because it handled better. So in the case of this, you want the handling, get a Sport. On the other hand, if you want it smoother, just get a plain old one. You don't want to drive a standard. 96% of Americans drive automatics. You'll get one that has a CVT transmission instead of a standard transmission. As the owner of this told me, the dealer only gets one of these a year. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the reasons they marked it up. They said, oh, there's guys behind waiting to buy this car. So they mark it up because they know it's a standard and zippy and it's a sport model. So they know somebody's going to buy that car. They only get one of them a year. It's not like they got to sell hundreds of them. And if you only have one, guess what? You're going to raise the price. That's just how it works. For those of you who don't follow the crowd, like his daughter, her Acura that got stolen was a standard. This is a standard. She loves driving the car. There's drivers out there that want a car like this. Just like the reason Toyota makes a limited amount of TRD Camrys is because there's a limited amount of people that want a sporty camera and they're not as boring. They got nice red racing stuff inside. They handle a lot better, a rougher ride, but they handle better. So you're looking for a sporty Civic and you really can't go wrong with one of these. The only problem is the price. Okay, Honda makes great engines. Well, why is this 2017 Accord burning oil? Didn't when it was new. They followed everything they're supposed to do changing the oil, but as far as I'm concerned, the directions were wrong. The first 40,000 miles, they changed the oil every 10,000 miles because that's what they were told to do. I always tell people five. Well, then he watched my videos and decided let's change it every five. He's changing every five, but unfortunately in this case, the damage has already been done to the engine. The problem is, is that this is a 2017 Earth Dreams 2.4. Now, it is not turbocharged. It just has the GDI fuel injection system. It is not turbocharged. And it burns about a quart of oil every 1,200 miles. Believe me, if this baby had been turbocharged, it'd be burning a lot more oil than that. We're gonna show you What's happened to this engine? It was a design flaw of these things. If you let the oil go too long, it got dirty and it wore the engine. So we're gonna take plastic top off and we're gonna take the spark plugs out and do a wet and dry compression test of the engine. Just need a 10 millimeter wrench. We'll take the little plastic cover off. No one knows why they gotta keep putting these things on. There we go, now we're getting to the ignition coils. And if you're wondering, yes, he has changed the PCV valve, hoping that it was stuck open and that's why the oil was being sucked in. But no such luck, it didn't make any difference. It's still burning oil. We'll take all the coils off so we can get to the spark plugs. We'll take all the ignition coils off, wiggle them, take them out of the way. Get them all out of the way, twist them and pull them out of the way. Now we'll take the spark plugs off, just for giggles. We'll look at them, see what they look like. And as you can see, they're definitely burning some oil. Not outrageous, it's not totally coated, but you can see there's burnt oil. The carbon gets built up from them burning. So that one's definitely burning oil. I bet the law will be about exactly the same. From my experience, all of the piston rings wear on all of them pretty much evenly, but We'll find out. There's number two. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. It's got burn marks on it. Then you can see a little carbon, not, not outrageous, but it's burning oil about the same as the other one. Three, it's about exactly the same. You can see some oil burning and then fusing on the plug. Here's number four, you can see it's about the same. So now we're gonna do a compression test of all the cylinders naked. The first one was 185. Now we'll do the second one, okay? Second one's 180, that's real close. And the third one is 180. So the compression is pretty good. Now we're gonna add a little oil to each cylinder, see if the pressure goes way up. So be scientific, we'll pour some mobile one into my little injector here. How'd you like to have this injected into you? And we'll just put a little turn in the number one, about a teaspoonful really. Now we'll see if it goes up a whole bunch. Okay, turn over. The one that was like 180 is now 185, but that's not showing wear in the rings. The little bit of oil I put in takes up space. That increases the compression pressure because there's less space for it to go up so it'll compress more. So that's normal. That means that the compression ring is okay. But understand one thing about pistons. The pistons have various rings on them. The top ones are the compression rings. But under them are the oil control rings. And what happens on these things is, the oil control rings go bad. And if this shows that all the pressures just change a little bit with this, it shows that 
the compression ring's perfectly fine. But the reason it's burning all is because the oil control rings go bad. Very typical on these. We'll test the rest of them, see what happens. And the same thing, this has gained about 5 PSI, showing that the compression ring it really isn't all that worn. It's the oil control ring. Now we'll do the other two. Okay. Same thing, this one went about four pounds. That's not worn either. We'll do the last one with the same amount of oil. That's a little line's come in handy. You can put the same amount in each one. Okay. And this one went up about three pounds. So, compression rings are perfectly fine. It's the oil control rings that are worn. Now, since we got all apart, we're gonna go get new spark plugs and put them in. And it's a deal where it's something that they can live with Every so often, you can change the spark plugs. You can see how easy it is to change the spark plugs. It's no big deal. Now, it's not like it was even running bad. It wasn't running bad even with this little bit of fouling. So, since it's burned about a quart every 1,200 miles, maybe once every three or four years, you could change the spark plug. These are iridium spark plugs. I've seen them last 200,000 miles. You can't do it in this because it's burning a little oil. Eventually, it'll clog them up. But it's still running good with this, so they can go quite some time still. A Honda's not going to do anything about this with the mileage that it has on it and their warranty's well gone. But it was a design flaw of this particular engine. Now, I got to say, the newer Earth Dream engines, I don't see this problem with. It was when they first started coming out with them, they kind of messed up with the oil control rings. So we'll change the plugs and they'll keep adding oil, which is a smart thing to do. Because she still loves the car, she drives kids all over the place, it gets good gas mileage, and it runs fine. It's just that they got to remember every 1,200 miles or so to add a quart of oil. Nice shiny new spark plugs, and you'll notice they already have a nice plating on them. Don't put anti-seize or anything on them. They're fine the way they are. So we'll put them all in, button it up with the coils back on it all snaps in place the beauty cover back on we always wonders why they put these things on but i guess it's so they can put the earth dreams name on it they serve absolutely no purpose other than making it a bigger pain to work on the car and look it's bolted down like fort knox like what's going to happen to this thing it doesn't make much sense plus it didn't have a cover on the wood rattle in the first place look it's smoking like mad look at that smoke <laughs> It's really not burning all that much oil. That's because we put a little oil in the cylinders to do the compression test. And guess what? Now it's got to burn that oil and throw it up back. You're going to see that after you do a wet compression test. That's normal. You can see the engine itself is running perfectly fine. Now you can see this thing's got 84,000 miles on it. Still runs like a top. It's a nice looking interior, black and chrome. Nice backup camera, even though the sun's in here. There, now we're vlogging it. Now it isn't a turbo, it's just a 2.4 liter engine, but it is a Honda. So let's see what this thing can do. Here we go. Now you notice you didn't hear any shifting. Now for a CVT, it's not bad. It didn't have that motorboat lag that the really old ones had. I personally like the regular transmission myself with actual gears, but it's really not that bad. Here we're going 40. We'll step on the gas. You can see it's got good enough pickup to pass people on the highway. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So there we have it. The mystery of the oil burning accord. Listen to me. Change the oil every 5,000 miles on any car, especially one of these. But it is the oil control rings not the compression rings it still runs like a clock gets good gas mileage the pcv valve didn't help it why well, i knew it wouldn't help it but it's so cheap and easy to change always try it but it still runs good it's got a lot of life left in it just a shame that on the weak side on their oil control ring so if you're thinking about buying one hey if you're looking at a used one you saw how easy it was to take those spark plugs out take them out they're covered in oil put it back in and say no i'm not buying this car but if you have it just take care of it it can last a really long time there's an interesting car you don't see that much of it's a 2020 acura i l x and they don't make them anymore they made it for about nine years the reason they stopped making them was because just like the americans they're starting to give up with four-door sedans so instead of this when they stopped making this they had the acura integra they brought back the name acura integra but it's basically this car with a hatch on it they just called it acura integra it's a hatchback 
because they know people want hatchbacks, so that's what they went for. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these cars. They just don't make them anymore because it's a style thing. They're, okay, let's make hatchbacks. They're all based on Honda Civics anyway. And like a Civic, they're very efficient. He came from Syracuse, New York, here to Rhode Island, and he got 37.7 miles a gallon in this thing. A fast little car to get that kind of gas mileage. It's a lot of fun because under the hood, you see a Honda engine. It's a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. It's an excellent engine. Tell people over and over, four-cylinder engines are great, but don't go too small. Now all the new stuff, they're going to 1.5, 1.3, some even three-cylinder engines, and they can soup them up with GDI turbocharging, and they'll have a lot of horsepower and go, but they will wear out faster. This 2.4 liter engine, I would predict probably go three, four, five hundred thousand miles. Get that out of a four or three-cylinder turbocharged car. You won't, you just won't. And in this case, great gas mileage, 38 miles a gallon on the highway, and nice speed, you don't need to turbocharge it. It's 2.4 liter proven Honda four cylinder technology. Marvelous engine is hooked up to an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. If you know anything about those, they shift like a dream. You can shift them manually if you want, but the computers are set up quite well to do whatever you want. If you want to put it manual, go right ahead, you know? But it's not one of those crappy CVT transmissions that slips and slides, brakes cost a fortune. Honda has great engineers. It's their own transmission, and they know what they're doing when they make them. We'll take a look inside. And there's the transmission. Like I say, if you want, you can use the paddle shifters to shift it up and down. Or you can just put it in drive and leave it that way. Now start her up. Honda starts right up. Got to push that button. Look at this. I love it. It has a regular parking brake with a cable to the back wheels. Not one of those electronic crappers that you lose power. It might not work. This works. You much rather have this than have some electronic piece of crap you got to deal with. Now as you see, it's got a nice sunroof. Set up quite well. It's got your screen here. It's not some fake block. We just stuck it on. Guess what? It's made into the car. It was designed correctly. It wasn't an afterthought like some of those Toyota rectangular monsters that stick up and block some of your view. Turn the traction control off if you want. He lives in Syracuse, New York. He didn't even put snow tires on the stuff in the winter. They're well designed and he said he's never even slid in these things. They're well made. You don't have to put snow tires, you can if you want, but he didn't even bother. He had no problems driving around it. Didn't have any slipping or sliding. And of course, being a Honda product, you know, it's basically a Honda Civic. Acura's owned by him, but this really is pretty much a Honda Civic. It's what it's based on. You know, it's gonna last forever. You know, the paint's got high quality to it. I mean, look at that red paint. And this particular one was made in Ohio. They've been making Hondas in Ohio since the 80s. So you know what they're doing. This isn't some new thing that they just came over. My scan tool's gonna make me eat my words, and it isn't a fine car or not. As any other car, you just turn it on. Simple plug-in up here. Now it's warming itself up. We'll look a little bit more. Now this is a sporty car. Not all that much headroom. I'm not that big, but of course seats are adjustable up and down too. Pretty new vehicle, so we can do auto VIN. And it's loading the program. Do a full scan. We're off to the races. We'll start it up. So the engine will stay warmed up when we look at the live data in a few minutes. Got a killer stereo system in it. Which unfortunately I can't turn on because if I do that it will record so much music. And then they'll sue me and want to get money because I'm using the music. So silence is golden in this case. So far everything's blue. Now we're waiting. I've turned the traction control off there so we can get a little harder drive when we road test it. I like the dash nice setup. Real big glove box you can put a bunch of crap in. It's typical Acura or Honda. Everything passes no fault. It only has one code, and that's this crazy integrated driver support system. So let's see what that crazy thing is. Dirt or dust on the millimeter wave radar. <laughs> okay, well, we'll erase that code. Turn the engine off. Now we'll go to live data, see what kind of shape everything's in. The computer says it's all good, but you get a lot more data looking at the live data. The computer's only got to flag things if it's plus or minus 20% or more error, so I can see if something's a little squirrely just by looking at the data. It's color-coded. If it's red, it's... Got a problem. A lot of data on these. They're very complex cars, but they're also very well made. Something does go wrong, you'll be able to figure it out. As you can see, the air fuel ratio lambda is 0.99, sometimes 0.98. That means it's either 
0.01% off or 0.02% off, which is nothing. But no misfires, it's just typical, you know. Zero, zero, zero misfires. It even shows you the fuel pressure. You don't need gauges anymore. You can use these machines to see if there's a problem. It does have direct fuel injection. It does have high fuel pressure. And rather than taking it all apart and getting leaks in the system when you put a gauge on, you can just read it right here. Now let's take it for a spin. Well, before we take off, I told him I only had that one code for the dirty sensor for the radar. And he said, you know, that kind of makes sense. I was using a cruise control and sometimes it would turn itself off and act wacky because the sensor's dirty. That's how particular these things are. So wash your car more often if you got a car like this. All right, we're going to put it in sport mode, so now it's going to go faster. And... We'll also make sure we have traction control off. You'll notice we're on the bumpy Rhode Island Road, and you get a little bumpy ride because this basically is a sports sedan. It's made for sports for zooming around. It rides fine, but in the bumps, you're gonna feel the bumps because it handles so well. They're really nice handling vehicles. You can go as fast as you want. Tires aren't gonna squeal, and yet they can get phenomenal gas mileage. Although not with me driving the thing. <laughs> Idle smooth as silk, but when you wanna go, you just step on the gas and where you go you really don't need a paddle shifter <laughs> it's got it but it works fine by itself Gee, it's really a shame they don't make these things anymore i do have to say this thing was a lot more fun to drive than its successor i've driven the new acura integros this is a lot more fun to drive. In this case, they went backwards in time. They didn't want to sit down, they went to a hatchback, but it wasn't as much fun as this thing. You're looking for a car like this and you can find one? Hey, they're a lot of fun to drive. Trannies are solid. Phenomenal gas mileage, 37, 38 miles a gallon on the highway. For something that's a zippy and fun to drive. Now there is one downside. The owner of this is only 20 years old, so he has high insurance rates, even though he's not running into anything. That's the problem with youth, old age, well, we get away with a few things, you know, as long as we don't run into something, our insurance rates are pretty cheap. If you make it this old, you know, I never thought I'd make it this old, but I did. So they have a beautiful car they don't make anymore. Well, I guess Honda made a mistake on this one, but what can you do? They're all going to SUVs. That's just the name of the game now. Maybe one day they'll realize that's probably a mistake. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.